Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Well, John McAfee says he's got big breaking news on what really happened to him down in Belize coming up. Then we'll get his take on Obamacare, the situation with Russia, and so much more. He's got an investigative journalist with us today uh, that he's working with. That is all coming up in the next segment. But pharmacist Ben Fuchs, the latest March issue of InfoWars magazine that, by the way, we sell at cost, has John Wayne on the cover, and it says the war on men. And, I mean, it's just undoubted now. Uh, they're saying just the classical male model is racist, anti-woman. Uh, being a man is bad. We've got to eradicate masculinity. Why does the establishment want to do that? Let me tell you why. Testosterone, male hormones, are not just for men. They're building hormones. They're strength hormones. They're vitality hormones. They're anti-aging hormones. They're growth and repair hormones. We are supposed to be like lions, Alex, and testosterone is the hormone of lions. Instead of lions, we've become like, like, like puffer fish. We become slothful. And <laughs> we be, that's this is what we become. We're not lean, mean fighting machines. We're like big fat gorillas in the zoo that are ha that, that uh, have big bellies and and big breasts. Males, I'm talking about. The reason is the reason this we have this war on men is not so much a war on men as much as it's a war on anabolism. Anabolism is the fancy word for building and growth and repair. It's a war on vigor. It's a war on vigor, exactly. We become domesticated. Instead of being, being lions in the, in the jungle, we're like big fat tabby well, cats. Well, it's like the hyenas, couch. they say, is the only animal that has testosterone in the milk. Oh, is that right? I didn't know that, yeah. but I can see why. Testosterone is the hormone of vigor and strength. So as, as much as it's a hormone, as much as there's a war on against masculinity, it's really a, a war on our vigor and on our strength and on, I believe, our ability to resist this new world order, to resist this globalist uh, hege hege hegemonic, hege hegemonic, if that's hegemon. the right word. Hegemon. It's, to, redu it's uh, to reduce our ability to resist the monster, the Leviathan. So it's not so much much a war on men, although that is occurring. It's a war on our health and on our vigor. It's a war on independence. It's a war on liberty. It's a war on common sense, consciousness. It's, it's a, a war on free will. It's a chemical war. We are being, it's chemical warfare, literally, but it's even it's the most chemical warfare, the most insidious kind, because it's biochemical warfare. It's the kind of chemical warfare that, that uh, affects our biochemistry. And on, uh, this is where the whole idea of epigenetics comes from. This is why they don't want us to know about epigenetics. This is why you keep hearing about genetics. They don't want you to know that you have control over how they you don't know men are supposed to be incredibly energetic and feel crazed all the time. My grandfathers were like me. And people think I'm a weirdo nowadays because I'm crazed. I'm just a barbarian Texan. I mean, so we're we, supposed to be barbarians. We, that's how we built the frontier. That's how we. That's how we built the country. You know, we, we didn't build the country by sitting on our butts watching TV. We built the country by chopping wood and going out there and exploring and seeing what was what was on the other side of the forest. And all of this is regulated by the hormone testosterone. This is the hormone of for men and for women, not just for men. You know, we think of it as a male hormone, but it's not just a male hormone. It's also a Is that why woman. women get so crazed when they take our super male vitality? It could be. I don't know. Well, it just has a bigger effect. Like I want. I'm mean, not a plug here at the end, but I want to get your analysis of this. I mean, I know you it's like. It's an this. awesome product. I, it's an awesome. Product. It's tribulus. Yeah, it's tribulus, and it's got the ashwagandha. Suma, the ashwagandha. Yeah. It, it has herbs that are called adaptogenic herbs, and these are herbs that help you adapt. To the environment there's no new there's no uh, medicines that are adaptogenic only nutrients and uh, herbs are adaptogenic and an adaptogenic herb or adaptogenic nutrient is a nutrient that pulls you up when you need to be pulled up or pulls you down when you need to be pulled down the same the same ashwagandha it will pull you up if you need to be pulled up it'll pull you down if you need to be well that's pulled what everybody down. i know these guys that were real irritable they said it makes smooths them out
it smooths you out. This is what an adaptogen does. So making sure you're on a nutritional supplement program, making sure you're taking care of the epigenetic component of genetics. By plug the way, your get, website. Plug your website. Brightsideben.com. And let me plug Doc Wallach's new book, Epigenetics. If you're interested in reading a good book, Epigenetics by Doc I want Wallach. him on. I want to carry that book. We're going to get Wallach on with his book as soon as we're carrying it. God bless you, Ben Fuchs. Thank Great you. job. Bye -bye. Epigenetics is key. And a lot of big movies getting made about it right now. And he came out here about five or six months ago, did some 50 cal shooting with us and did a great job. And of course, I've interviewed him before that uh, when he was on the run uh, from the kleptocratic authorities down in Belize. But he's back in the good old U.S. of A. And he's with the investigative reporter John Cassaretto with us uh, today, who writes for some big publications out in California. We're going to be going over exclusive John McAfee's ultimate hack. Uh, that's one of his uh, articles from SiliconAngle.com. And another report exclusive, Deconstructing McAfee. And we're going to get into some big breaking news with Belize and how it ties in the United States. And it was probably six months ago or, or even more when John McAfee was here and he was in studio with us. And I was just amazed that stuff he told us six months before that about Ryerson and things uh, that no one had talked about in the press turned out to be true uh, connected to the government and Iran down in Belize. Uh, I mean, I, I still aired that nightly news interview, but I was really concerned about it. Not that I was doubting him. It's just that no one had had said this but him. And and so now I'm really going to pay attention to what they get to at the bottom of the hour. But guys, give us a sneak peek. I want to get into Obamacare first. Now they tried to hire you and how that later came out in the news and wh where you see all that's going, John. But give us a sneak peek here and tell us about this investigative journalist of, of, of what you're going to be talking about, John McAfee. Uh, well, basically, I've, I came back to the States in um, December of 2012. I moved up to Portland. Um, at no time has the, um, uh, the Belizean government uh, let go of their intent to, to silence me. Alex and the, uh, uh, finally, uh, an event happened in Portland on the 12th of September of last year of, you know, major importance to me. It was an attempt on my life. Uh, my wife was with me at the time. Uh, we have sort of been under underground uh, ever since. Uh, I've gone to the FBI. Um, I have uh, finally decided to release all the data, and I, I released it to uh, John Casaretto. Uh, he came to visit me for a few days, spent uh, full time pouring through all the evidence, uh, conversations of Belizean officials, uh, internal memos to the Belizean government, and he became a believer. That's great. Your mic's not too good. We're going to double mics for you for a minute. Keep going. I've, and went back and, and has, has serialized uh, this entire event. Uh, he wrote the first 2,400-word uh, segment uh, two days ago, and then the Deconstructing McAfee, which was uh, basically his, his first uh, contact with me and how, how startling it all was to him. Uh, but I think John, when, when I first contacted him, it was extremely skeptical. After three days of pouring through evidence, uh, telephone calls with uh, individuals and officials in Belize, uh, he's become a firm believer. Uh, the evidence is there. Um, and uh, I feel I have no other choice now but to go public with it. And I think you're the first, and I think you are the first uh, uh, broadcast uh, of agency that I have talked to. We're going to get into that at the bottom of the hour. Uh, first off, I want to get your breakdown here today uh, on the fact that Obama did come to you and that letter came out in the press after you reported it here first. It was confirmed. They reached out to you and others to, quote, fix healthcare.gov. And, 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 of course, you said there's nothing to fix. It's, it's a total fraud. It's a total joke. It's not even real. And, and we concur with that analysis. And, and other uh, programmers have said they want to make the debate about the site not working, not what a screw job Obamacare is, and it still doesn't work properly. And the people that think they're signing up aren't signing up, and now the IRS is saying they're using it to just register you to go grab your bank account. What is your take on Obamacare? What is your take on the, the Russia situation? The whole world. People want to know what John McAfee thinks about what's happening in the world. Okay, uh, first of all, it wasn't Obama himself that, that came. Sure, the White House. It was a, a lawyer from the House Ways and Means Committee that uh, asked if I would consider coming and giving advice, and I said no, uh, because my advice is simply scratch it and, and uh, start over, scrap the whole thing. Uh, they wouldn't do that, I know that for a fact, and I didn't want to waste my time nor theirs and, and turn them down. Um, what do I think about the, the entire world? I, I think, Alex, that we are in a, a very dangerous situation in terms of privacy, 
uh, the telephones that you have uh, next to you and, and the telephones that each of us are carrying around with us contain applications from corporations, individuals, from the NSA, the CIA, uh, from almost every agency. And if you, if you look at what these applications are doing, an overwhelming majority of them are turning on your microphone, turning on the camera, uh, accessing your emails, accessing your SMS messages, and even making phone calls on your behalf without your knowledge. Um, we're, we're in a very dangerous situation because we have accepted a technology that we do not understand yet. Uh, we don't understand its weaknesses. We don't understand the, its limitations. Um, the Bank of America, for example, if you use the Bank of America online banking app, uh, you will find that it, it, you have given it permission to turn on your camera and take videos and still pictures anytime that it wants. Uh, why? Well, perhaps it's because uh, if you empty your bank account online and then say, I didn't do it, they can say, well, you know, we have, we have photos of you. But think about how Big it. Brother that is. We've known they've yes. been doing that for decades using the webcams, but they would deny it. Now it's just ubiquitous. They're just doing it. Right, and, and the webcams is one thing because you don't, you don't sleep with your computer. You don't carry it with you all the time. We carry our phones with us, our smartphones. And there's an overwhelming percentage of these apps that are spying on you, and big time. Uh, so we've written an application, or I've written an application.